Hi, it's Misha Kim Acheson, August Fulcher, Gubbio Aspalia. I'm here today with Graeme Cantwell, who is writer director of Who We Love. Thanks so much for joining me, Graeme. Thank you for having me. So I, I wanted to ask, um, you obviously made the, the short Lily quite a few years ago. Yes. Um, did you always know that there was kind of more to the character of Lily that you wanted to explore? Or at what point did you realise there is like a feature within yeah. the, the short? It's funny because uh, initially when we made the short film, I, t I thought that was it. It yeah. is what it is. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a contained story. Um, and it was only when we were doing the, the festival circuit uh, and we went to lots of different festivals, all kinds of different countries. And everybody kept asking what what happened next and, you know, what happens with Una and what about her life? And, you know, they, they wanted to know a lot more. Um, and it was Alan Fitzpatrick, the producer of the film, approached me and said, we should make a feature. And I resisted at first, uh, thinking, like I said, it's it's a contained story, you know. But the more I thought about it, the more things occurred to me, you know, areas that we could explore and how we could expand the universe. And the other thing is the short actually had a really strong impact on kids when we were taking it out to festivals and it, you know, it, it spoke to them and it helped them or it made them open up in a way that maybe they hadn't before. And I just thought, you know, if a short film has that kind of reach, then the reach of a feature film is so much more. You could get to so many more kids. And what's that process like, kind of turning a short into a feature? Like Long. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a long old process. And um, so it took a while for me to figure out what to do with it uh, in terms of expanding the world and expanding. And it was really the other characters bringing them in mm. uh, and then exploring Lily's home life a bit more. Uh, and the journey, you know, it, it was giving her a different arc. Uh, what I didn't want this film to be was a Am I Gay? story you know yeah. and struggling with sure. that she's confidently gay from the start yes right from the outset and that was important to me um but it was in, in a sense what lily wants to do is she wants to change to fit the world but she realizes eventually that she shouldn't need to change mm. uh, and while she may not be able to change the world she can change the people around her so that in effect the world becomes uh, more, I suppose, accepting of her and tolerant of her. And, you know, um, although I, I kind of hate those words, accepting and tolerant, sure. you know what <laughs> yeah, I mean? It's yeah. not it's not something really, I think, that should be aspired to. It's like, a, um, yeah, it, it really, really the idea behind expanding the short uh, was to figure out that journey for Lily, you know, to take her on that bigger curve, that bigger arc um, towards acceptance of who she was. Um, and figuring out how to fit into the world or how to fit the world to her, mm. you know. So that's that's kind of um, and and as I was developing it, uh, we, the the short film Lily was at uh, a festival called the Iris Prize Festival in Wales, um, and I met with a guy over there who was is um, he 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 ran one of the biggest LGBT festivals in the states, and I asked him for advice, and he said if you're going to write a feature film version of this, you have to get a, a a lesbian writer mm. to partner with you on it. Uh, he said one for credibility, but also just to know that you're not talking through your arse kind of thing. Sure, Do you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, so I went on a on a, a long search looking for a co-writer um, and eventually I found Katie McNeese and she's just brilliant. Uh, and it started off as very much as that, you know, conduit to that world. Um, but she very quickly, she came on board and she very quickly turned into much more of a partner in a broader sense uh, in terms of particularly challenging me, not just from, you know, uh, representing things properly, but also just from a narrative standpoint. It was great. You mentioned kind of wanting to explore Lily's home life a little. When, when I was watching the film, what really struck me was um, the two father figures, Simon's father and, and Lily's father, they're really like I, I think unusual but like nuanced characters and and I was wondering if you you kind of meant them to juxtapose each other or yeah or I mean there's there's this is something that you know from talking to kids doing the festival circuit something that I I heard a lot of is they don't know how their parents are going to react which is the the main fear that stops them from coming out um, because they love their folks, they love their grandparents, you know, they don't want to upset them, they don't want to disappoint them. Um, and I did want to explore that in a way that particularly, like with 
Jimmy's character, Jimmy Smallhorn's character, Fran, who's Simon's dad, he's very much the 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 epitome of an Irish dad or a yeah. Dublin dad, you know, who's he's he's all kind of uh, machismo and, you know, he's <laughs> but he loves his son, but he just has trouble articulating that, you know, and that is a thing for Irish dads. They'd never say, I'm proud of you to your face, yes. but down the pub, <laughs> they'd be talking about you for hours, you know, um, and I wanted to explore that and put them into a situation where because the mom isn't there, he has to deal with it. Yeah. The dad has to deal with it and it comes to a head and, you know, it's it's how does he do that? You know, and, you know, there, there are so many different ways to to explore that. And I wanted to do it in such a way that it was a character that you could empathize with and you could see his struggles uh, and you could see why he behaves the way he behaves, maybe. He's always just looking to protect his kid, but it comes across as being a bit domineering, you know what I mean? And then on the flip side of that was Lily's dad, who is the most accommodating dad. He's the fun dad. Yes. He's, you know, but at the same time, he's he keeps coming out with all these homophobic jokes yeah. and stuff. And, you know, and you're like foot and mouth disease, you know, he just yes. can't help himself. So that's one of the things that keeps Lily from really being herself with yeah. him, although she's pretty sure if she came out to him it'd be fine she doesn't know yeah you know and then at the same time she had she has her mom uh which is a completely other uh story um because her mom is, is is another character who's quite strict and quite you know she knows what she wants and she knows how she wants the world to be and if lily doesn't fit into that then that's a problem yes for her you know so yeah again just creating those dynamics it's like the you know butting heads yeah. As much as you can, you try to create conflict between the characters um, so that they, they, they butt heads, like I say. And, and uh, yeah, it, it, it just makes for really good drama. Absolutely. And then on the other hand, you've like Lily and, and Simon's relationship, which is just so like, I think Simon's like the perfect best friend. And <laughs> yeah. it's just like his relationship with, with Lily and his relationship with the school principal. Like yeah. I've got to wonder like what, what, what kind of first impression Simon makes on people, you know, he's, yeah. he's yeah. just such a... It's like, to be honest, when, when I wrote the short film, that character was kind of nebulous and vague. Uh, and it was right down to the wire when we were filming. Uh, we hadn't found someone to play Simon. Um, and I used to teach in the Irish Film Academy and uh, the girl who ran it, Rachel Sarah Murphy, said, you have to look at this kid, Dean Quinn. Uh, he just, he sounds like he is the character. And he came in and he was just like that. He was younger than all the other cast, but he was just the character, you know. And I just knew the minute he opened his mouth, we'd found <laughs> Simon. And then for the feature film, it really is just him. It's looking at him and imagining him in various scenarios, various situations, you know. Now, obviously, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a bigger version than him. You know, Dean can be quite reserved. He can be quiet. But, you know, get him on his own and get him in, a, in an environment where he's comfortable. And he's, yeah. he's like Simon, you know. He's, he's that funny, gregarious, very sharp, very witty kid. You know what I mean? Um, but there's a vulnerability there, too, which, which is what I really wanted to explore with the character of Simon, is to find that vulnerability, you know, where... As filmmakers, we're always trying to create empathy. We're always trying, like the, for me, the ultimate goal is to, is to move somebody, to, to make them feel something, whatever that is. And it's, it's through characters like Simon that you can do that. You yes, because like you, the film really doesn't, you know, it's, it's about the closeted teen experience. It's about bullying, the spread of gossip. But it, it has this gritty edge, but you still have this wonderful warm-hearted humor that comes yeah. through was that yeah. very difficult to write into that script uh, or not was it natural enough? really I mean it, it it was with the with the short film that was kind of it, it's it's observation it's your own experiences it's people you know you know it all blends together um and and sometimes it's just a perfect storm and it just clicks you know and that was the case with the short film and then it was really just expanding on uh, extrapolating on those characters and introducing new characters who could create extra friction yes. with these guys, you know. Um, like I'm thinking of as well of Violet's mom, who was played by Norma Sheehan. Uh, and I just, I've come across mothers like that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. The trophy mom. Yeah. And they want their daughter to be a model of themselves, but better, you know. And, and there's so much pressure for those kids 
to, to, yeah. to be a certain way in that environment, you know, and that's one of the things with uh, with Violet that I really wanted with the with the feature film was to explore her side of it as well and why she behaves the way she does. Um, and it's, you know, it's quite evident how she feels about Lily or, you know, she's struggling with who she is, her identity and how she feels. Um, but she feels pressure to behave a certain way uh, and to be portrayed a certain way. Uh, and that results in this kind of at times brutal behavior. Yeah. You know, um, but you need people to understand it is the thing. You need them to be able to look at it and say, OK, I get why she would do that. It's wrong, but yes. I get why she would yeah. do it, you know. And and key to that was getting Venetia Bowen, uh, who's the actress who played her and just the thought process. You can see it yes. at work. You, you know, can, some yeah. actors, you can really just see something going on upstairs totally. that 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 just it tells a whole other story, you know what I mean? There's subtext there. And when you have an actor who's intelligent enough to be able to pull that out, it just, it makes my life so much easier. As a <laughs> filmmaker, you know, you just turn the camera on and you capture it. <laughs> yeah. And that's really it, you know. So yeah. it's it, it was lovely to have an, having such a, like a smart, intelligent, um, talented, young group of actors. And then we had a, a our kind of, the, the older actors who were much more experienced come in and it gave them confidence to be able to go where they needed to go, you know. Um, and like, you know, I'm thinking of of people like uh, Jimmy Smallhorn, who I talked about, and, and Paul Ronan and Amy Joyce, you know, these actors who have been doing what they do and they're so good at it. Yeah. It just it it gives me confidence and it gives the younger actors confidence mm. to, to take chances, you know, to take risks with what they're doing and, and to push it a little bit further. And I think I think that really shows up on the screen. You know, it's definitely it's yeah. one of the things I'm most really most happy about is the level of performances yes. that we got. I don't think there's a week now in it. So, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm really happy. Yeah. With the cast that we had. No, they're, they're brilliant. Um. I'm I'm from Dublin and watching the film it it felt very much like saturated in the culture of the city and very authentic having the George you know and places like that kind yeah. of around this coming of age LGBT film um, yes could you talk a bit about the location yeah I mean it's like obviously I grew up in Dublin I'm from Dublin and I've spent most of my working life working in the city center uh, and you're just surrounded by it the whole time you know when you go out at night there's there's a vibe to the place and I really did want to try and capture that one of the things that um that I really wanted to make sure we did capture as well is the vibrance of the LGBT scene in Dublin yes. because it's so colorful and it's so welcoming um, and I just wanted to, to, to pitch it as that, as what it is, uh, so that maybe, you know, kids looking at it could see it as a place to go, like, a, you know, a, and be welcomed and be uh, brought into a kind of because there's a community there. there you know what I mean? Definitely is. Yeah. Um, and, and it's a vibrant community and it's colorful and it's just really pleasant to be around. And I wanted to put that on screen. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, the school in the film is my old school. It's where I went to secondary school, oh, really? the Donahue's Community School. And <laughs> they were just brilliant. Um, Peter, who's the principal there, was just fantastic. Like they literally gave us the run of the place and uh, they couldn't have been more helpful. Um, and I just it's a very like the school itself is really colorful and, you know, vibrant. And it's it's a really nice palette to work against you know one of the things I, I always try to aspire to is to get as much color as I can into uh, the films that I make and a lot of the time you can't because you're in rooms with white walls and it's really <laughs> hard to make that look good so we were really blessed you know we, we did very little dressing in the school itself we kind of walked in and it was there yeah, yeah what we need absolutely. you know so yeah yeah um, and then there's all these little pockets you know just bits of Dublin that you know you you I know from, you know, exploring <laughs> them myself or growing up or yeah. whatever it is. And you just want to put that on screen, yes, you yes. know, and, and, and you hope that when you take it out to the world, people see that, you know, and it makes them maybe want to, to come and see a bit of Dublin or something. You know, it, it's you do see it get represented. But a lot of the time, particularly the, the city centre in Dublin, it gets represented in a, in a kind of a not as not as kind of um, pretty or, you know, it, it's always yeah. much more gritty when it's put on screen, I think, the, the city centre. Yeah. So I just want to show another side of it because there is that other side of it. You know, yeah. the, 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 the more colourful 
glitzy kind of side of it, you know. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, it, it is in a way part of it is a bit of a love letter to the city because, uh, you know, it's it's where I grew up and it's uh, it's a big part of who I am, even in terms of a filmmaker, you know. I drive around the city and I'm constantly going to film there, film there, <laughs> film there, you know. So, yeah, it's it's no, it's great to, to be able to put it up on screen like that, you know. Good. Now, would, would you have any words of advice for aspiring writers, directors? Uh, yeah, I mean, the first thing that I always say to young filmmakers is that the main thing for me is to tell stories that mean something. That that connect with you personally. Because uh, if you do work on a feature film, you're going to be working on it for a long time. Maybe not as long as I was working on this, <laughs> yes. on who we love, but um, you will be working on it a long time. And if it doesn't mean something to you, then it's very difficult to find the energy to keep going with it. You know, a lot of people make films just because they want to make a film. And that's fine in and of itself, but so much better if you can find a story to tell that resonates you know, that, that that means something to you and that will move other people. That's really the main thing I think that lacks, that, that's lacking in a lot of the, the, the scripts I see or the, the films. If they don't work, that's the reason why. Right. Is that there's no connection between the filmmaker and the material. And when you find someone who has something to say or who really connects to the material, uh, then it's, uh, it's evident from the outset, you know. Um, the other thing, if you're a writer, is to write. Just keep <laughs> writing like every day. Um, I've like I've been doing this for over 20 years now and there isn't a day goes by that I don't do something film related. Now, some days like the last week or two, it's every day, all day <laughs> trying to get the film ready for the for the <laughs> festival, you know. Um, but then on other days, it could be just reading a book. It could be watching a film. It could be going to the theater. It could, you know, it's exploring all different aspects of this craft uh, and this industry, our industry, um, and just trying lots of different things. You know, that's yeah. that's something else I always say to young filmmakers is do everything on a set, do everything, you know, hold the boom pole, record the sound, get behind the camera, talk to the actors, do some acting, anything, do it all so that you know how to speak to everybody. You know what I mean? In, in a voice that's authentic, that y they feel that you can relate to their experience, you know, because you've done it before. Uh, try and try and light some stuff. Try, you know, uh, do everything that you can do. Experience every aspect of the filmmaking process. Uh, and it just it enriches your own experience as well. You know, yeah, yeah, it's um, yeah, I mean, and, and, and have fun is the other thing. <laughs> a lot of people forget to have fun yeah. when they're making films. Sure. It gets they get so intense. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> you see these young filmmakers, guys and girls who are like, you know, they really want to do a good <laughs> job. And you're like, yeah, yeah. But remember yeah. to have fun as well. Um, and then the last thing I'd say is to not be afraid to fail. You know, we're always striving for perfection, but it really is only when you do something and it doesn't work that you figure out why it doesn't work. And the next time you get better and better and better, you know, so so there's 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 definitely something to be said for stretching yourself beyond your comfort zone to a point where maybe it doesn't work. Yes, because then you find out what you need to do to make it work. You know what I mean? Um, I always I remember every every writer I meet, I ask them, what's the best advice you ever got? Um, and I asked George R.R. Martin, the guy who wrote Game of Thrones, I said, what's the best advice you ever got? And he said, Put yourself in your in your work, put yourself in your work. It doesn't have to be you as a character, but just your beliefs, your mm. fears, your hopes, all of that. Put that in your work and then people will see the characters as real people. Yeah. You know, and you're not trying to create something from nothing. It's you know, it's, it's much easier to build from something personal than to just start with a straw man and start trying to put flesh on that. You know what I mean? Um, and that really clicked for me as well and that was one of the things that made me think about Lily uh, the short film in a different light uh, and, and relate to experiences like when I was a kid being bullied and thinking well what would I want to say to me yeah. back then um, and a lot of what Una says to, to Lily um, it's in the, the short film and in the feature film is what I would have said to myself you know, so so in a way, the short film was a vehicle for that scene just to 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 have a character and particularly with that character who's kind of no nonsense. You yes, know, and, sure. and just says things straight. 
Uh, and I think if, if, you know, if younger people see someone who's like that say this kind of stuff, it resonates a bit more, you know what I mean? Mm. So that was that was one of the main kind of things that I that I that I always say as well is try and put yourself in it, you know, try and try and find a way to make it personal. And if you can make it personal and if you care about it, then it's much more likely we'll care about it when we're watching, you know.